Okay, for, for those of you who are interested, um, I shoot uh, predominantly with the uh, Nikon D500. Um, and uh, camera body and I use this uh, 200 to 500 Nikkor uh, telephoto lens. The, um, this, this is a very uh, classic combination for wildlife. Um, it's got several advantages. Um, wh one of them is that uh, this, this um, D500 has got a fantastic uh, autofocus system so you can shoot uh, you can shoot birds in flight and you can shoot uh, 10 frames a second with this camera. Um, it's not got the largest sensor, uh, I think it's about 20 megapixels, um, but really with wildlife, um, with wildlife photography, 20 megapixels I think is actually fine um, because the majority, what this lens does, a long telephoto lens like this, what it does is it reduces your it extends your reach, obviously, the, z the zoom, uh, go, I mean, I shoot mostly at 500 millimeter focal length, but it, of course, reduces your uh, angle of view, your field of view. So, you, you know, you, when you look through this lens at 500, you're looking at a tiny piece of, uh, uh, a tiny piece of the, uh, the scene. Um, and, uh, and so, you don't need lots of megapixels, you're not trying to capture a huge vista or a, a big valley or something in, like a landscape photographer would in, in huge detail. What you're trying to do is get close to a bird or an animal or something like that. And that's what this system, the Nikon D500 body and this uh, lens is designed to do. But it's got one little advantage that um, uh, that, that you may not know about, and that is that this is a, a DX or crop sensor uh, um, camera, um, but this lens is a, 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 is a full frame lens, and that what that means is that because of the crop factor, um, it actually magnifies on this body on a full frame body. It would magnify. You would have a, a 500 millimeter focal range. But on a, on a crop sensor body like this, your, your focal range is actually, because of the crop factor, is actually magnified to around 700, over 700 uh, millimeters, which means you do get, with this setup, you get fantastic reach. Um, and it's, it's wonderful for that. So this is my, my rig and, and, and I love it. Um, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's great. It is a little heavy. Um, and that uh, you know it does take a little bit of getting used to the weight of it, and you do have to uh, you have to use it a lot and strengthen up your arms and shoulders and so on to to um, to get to use it. But what um, I do I do take some photographs on a tripod and and so on. But the vast majority of my photography is done um, handheld. So I I carry this around with me and shoot as I go. I like to uh, you know I I mean I like to do both. And you know, sit down in a in a, you know, in a wood, and sit down on a log or something quietly and look for look for things that come by, and I do that quite a bit. But I also like to walk as well. I walk and just walk quietly through the through the environment and see what I can see and see what I can photograph. So this camera is great for that. If you if you have a, I mean, uh, you need lots of money as well. But if you have a an f4 500 or 600 millimeter lens it's that much heavier, much more difficult to handhold and much more difficult to carry around. Whereas this is, it is possible to carry this around. Um, when I take uh, photographs with this, m m the vast, this is a 5.6 uh, aperture um, and I take most of my photographs um, on 5.6 uh, or 6.7 you know, th th that kind of aperture, most of my photographs of wildlife. Um, and uh, uh, hand holding, I use a shutter speed of one five hundredth of a second. And I find that gives me um, very sharp, very sharp pictures, um, which I think is amazing. This, this lens have, has got uh, vibration reduction in it and it really works well. So you, you can probably shoot at a, at a slower shutter speed than a 500th, but I, th th that's the one that I use mostly as it works for me. For, um, 
for uh, for birds sitting in a tree, for squirrels, for deer, or something like that. That's what I would I would use. The diff it's different though for um, for birds in flight. Obviously, for birds in flight, the minimum shutter speed I'd use for birds in flight would be um, one fifteen hundredth of a second. Um, Often I'm shooting at uh, a two thousandth of a second, and sometimes even more, three thousandth, depending on the bird and depending uh, on how far away you are. The closer the bird, the faster the shutter speed you need. Um, so something like a, a, a swan or a heron flying at a reasonable distance from you, um, you know, fifteen hundredth of a second would be fine. Um, but if you've got a smaller bird that's closer to you, you really need to go higher. Um, Two, two thousandth of a second, three thousandth of a second, four thousand, whatever. Um, but of course, all that depends upon um, the light that you've got, you know, and, and how, how much you can work with that. Um, I shoot completely, uh, not completely, I, I shoot man, on manual, um, so I set the, um, the aperture myself, I set the shutter speed myself, but I do put the ISO on auto ISO, so it uh, adjusts the. Uh, the ISO up and down, and I've put a ceiling on, on, on uh, the ISO um, at 6,400. So um, it'll still take pictures at, uh, if it gets darker than that, but it, but the pictures are darker. And uh, um, but I find you know uh, obviously you know anything under 1,200 ISO is really quite good on this camera, quite sharp, quite noise-free, or, or the noise that you get you can easily remove. Uh, in post. Um, I mean I use dark table for all my post processing and uh, it's pretty good with noise reduction but once you get above 3400 uh, or 3000 whatever it is 200 the noise reduction is um, is more challenging and you can still see you lose clarity as you reduce the noise um, but you can still get acceptable pictures at that but depending on the depending on the uh, the scene that you've got and um, uh, and so on. So, so, but I've got some, you know, usable pictures at uh, 3,000 or even at 6,000 ISO. But uh, I wouldn't really want to go above that. So, um, so I don't. I just, I just don't go above uh, that shutter, uh, that uh, ISO. So um, that's it. I mean, I shoot, uh, uh, as I say, shoot manually. Um, oh, the other thing I've been, I just wanted to mention, as I've been uh, experimenting with recently, is. Uh, I started off using uh, spot metering, um, which I, um, I, f I find that fine actually. Spot metering, because you, if, you, if you're if you're looking at a, an animal, you really just want the exposure to be correct on that animal. You're not really bothered if um, you know if the rest of the scene is very dark or or very light and so so and so. And of course, you know when a um, when you use matrix metering, which I then I, I stopped using spot metering, and then, and then I went on to matrix metering for you know, maybe about a year. I was using matrix metering, and then I was using the um, exposure compensation dial quite a bit because obviously you've got to, if you're photographing a dark bird against a light background or a, a, a light bird like a swan or a seagull or something against a you know. Um, a dark background, it, it, you know, you can't, the, the camera's the matrix metering is just taking an average of the whole scene. It's not, it doesn't know that, you, you know, you want the little bird in that may be only 5% or 10% of the, of the frame, that that's what you want to expose correctly. It only knows there's a whole scene there. I'll have, you know, the camera decides to average it all out. So, um, but you can, you can overcome that. And I, I worked fine. I actually fi found spot metering fine and I found matrix metering fine. Once you get used to the, um, the exposure compensation that you need for different kinds of, uh, um, different kinds of, um, scenes and different kinds of birds. Um, but lately I've moved on to highlight weighted metering. So I'm just sort of experimenting with that and seeing how it goes. So, um, but I did look at some photographs, was it yesterday or the day before, that I'd taken using highlight weighted metering and, and it still had a few highlights, only a tiny amount of highlights. I think it was just um, the sun shining on, on leaves that were blown out. So I guess it doesn't completely eliminate um, highlights, but I guess it's, it's um, it's probably working on a certain percentage of um, managing the highlights, um, but but you know I mean that seems okay to me. I, 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 maybe I'm very easy going. I don't know, but highlight weighted metering seems to work quite well for me as well. So I don't uh, 
I'm not too too worried about that. But anyway, so that's um, that's my setup. Uh, D500 and Nikkor 200 to 500 uh, uh, lens and. Um, yeah. So I mean, the the, the oh yeah, the other thing I was going to say the uh, the covering here is not really for camouflage or anything like that. Oh my God! Wow, <laughs> a branch just fell out of a tree for no with no no wind or anything. Wow. Just have a look above my head to make sure there's nothing <laughs> flimsy looking. Um, but anyway, I thought that might happen in a high wind or a storm or something, but it just is not, there's only a light breeze today. I guess it just came to its critical point and of rot or damp or whatever it is. Anyway, so I digress. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the camouflage stuff on here is just to really, it's not for so much for camouflage, but more to just um, give the lens a bit of protection from knocks. I'm always uh, taking this lens through dense, uh, dense woodland and so on it you know the twigs and so on get get sort of uh, knocked against it and that's the same thing but this I'm not, there's not enough sun today to need to need the to need this uh, you know um, to need this um, but it's you this is useful um, the hood lens hood for um, just to, to give the actual uh, front element a bit of protection against uh, twigs and bracken as I as I clomp through the forest so um so that's what that's for um and uh, and the camera does this camera is out in all weathers so like i mean it is oh dear, it is weather sealed but um you know i like to give it a little bit of uh you know a little bit of extra um protection against uh you know against the against the rain because um i'm a bit anxious i suppose about it getting getting too wet so uh yeah, so that's my uh, my D five hundred, and also the other thing I do t I do take four K video with this, and I'm quite happy with the uh, you know with the video resolution and uh, the the video quality out of this. I'm not an expert with video, but I do like uh, I do like the look of the uh, you know the, the the video that comes out of this. So um, yeah, I mean I you know it's a great camera. I think. For the price, you know, obviously you can get much fancier cameras with more money. But this this is a wonderful camera for wildlife. So uh, anyway, that's my rig, and uh, I hope you found it interesting. <laughs> so uh, there we go.